Well, when you think about people and their activities, it becomes clear. We all do something. And we all do something every day. Now, your something may be different from my something, but it's something. So today, let's talk about how to make anything into something of much greater value. Because whatever else you're doing, I'm glad you and I are doing this something together right now. Welcome to Mornings with Bishop Robert. My goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So grab a cup of coffee or your favorite morning drink and hang out here for the next six or seven minutes. Then uh, like, subscribe, and share with a friend if you had a good time and you were encouraged. Well, who do you work for? Work's the greatest common denominator. When it's been a hard day's night and you should be sleeping like a log, you recognize that work can be demanding. The Beatles got the focus right in that song. When we work with all of our hearts, it truly is a sacrifice. And while Dolly Parton sings about a job demanding our lives from nine to five, the truth is that work consumes a lot more than eight hours. It consumes our minds. For many of us, our hearts are poured into our work as well. Yeah, how can something that you're doing gain value? Especially if it's the same something. Well, that's because it's not about what you do for work, but who you're working for. The who impacts the why. And that makes all the difference. Today's verse says, Whatever you do, Work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. When we make Jesus the answer to the question, who do you work for? Then even though the what may stay the same, doing it for him allows us to combine faith and work in ways that will make an incredible difference. So first of all, it impacts our regular day-to-day -day job, of course. Now, your job may call for a hard hat and a hammer, or it may require a keyboard and a mouse. It could even require talking all day. But whatever you do, in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And give thanks to God the Father through him as you do it. He'll open opportunities to let his light shine through your hands and feet and lips. It makes no difference if you're a working girl or earning the working man's PhD. The way you work can bring credit to Christ's name. But there is the world beyond our work, the one he had in mind when he created us. Because we're his workmanship. We're created in Christ Jesus for good works. In fact, God prepared them beforehand that we should walk in them. And these worlds often overlap. Both the worldly work and the spiritual work we do both require effort and faith if we're to make progress towards the goals God has set before us. You know, the story is told of an old Scotsman who operated a little rowboat for transporting people across a lake. One day, a passenger noticed the old man had carved on one oar the word faith. And on the other oar, the word works. Well, curiosity finally made him ask the meaning of this, and the old man said, let me show you. So he dropped one oar and started pulling only on the oar marked works. And the boat went round in circles. Then he dropped that oar, and he began to pull only on the oar marked faith, with the same result because both faith and works are required to accomplish God's goals. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord, not for men. But even though works are a significant part of the life of faith, it's really vital that we never confuse their role. Because, you see, the works we do as we live out our faith are not 
the source of our life in Christ. In other words, we don't do them to be saved. Now, the Bible is very clear on that. There's, there's absolutely nothing we can do to gain the forgiveness of God. That's totally His grace and only available to us by faith. It's by grace we've been saved through faith, not by any works we do. But some people hear that, and then they think, well, we're called to do nothing once we be call, begin to follow Jesus. They miss out on the blessings and the rewards of serving him well. Don't confuse our works with God's grace, because that's a hard way to make an easy living. The works that we do, whatever they are, are the living expression of our love for him. Just as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. And that living love that we have within us gets expressed all the time and, and everywhere. People that are led by his love don't live in a five o'clock world. They live out their love 24-7. So whether it's another manic Monday or just Sunday, your fun day, love drives us to work with all our heart as for the Lord and not for men. Serving him with all our hearts brings true and deep joy. <laughs> it's enough to make you whistle while you work because doing the things that you were created to do with the gifts he gives you and the power he provides, well, that's absolutely exhilarating. Discovering that nothing is as much fun as serving Jesus with people you love will be an epiphany. So it's hi-ho, hi-ho, off to work we go. And as we do, we're not some group of dwarfs without a purpose or design. As we follow Jesus, we're his hands and his feet, his voice and eyes and ears. We're like Christ walking the earth today. Expressions of his love in our homes our workplaces. In fact, everywhere the soles of our feet touch, we're his ambassadors, and our love for him is expressed in the work we do. When Jesus is the answer to the question of who we work for, then what we do for him is always transformed with greater value. It's not about what you do as you work for him. What matters is that it's him you're working for. Who impacts the why? And that makes all the difference. Hey, as we wrap up, can I ask you to help me introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better? Please like this video. It'll help more people see it. And follow or subscribe so you and I can get together every day. And I'd love to meet you in the comments section and hear about how our time together today touched your heart. It's also a great place to leave a question. One more thing. Share this with a friend, would you? Because as you do, you're part of the team touching hearts all over the world with the love of Jesus. Thanks for helping.